a financial modeling guy. So what we are going to do today, we are going to review what we did yesterday with the value of with the Varda composition, right? And uh, I'll write the formulas and then you will have this video to look and to think about it a little bit more at home. Right? So let me uh, describe the setup to you. So we have uh, uh, N assets, B1 to Bn, right? And each asset has, uh, has a certain return. Now we are assuming, right? We are assuming multi-normal distribution, multi-variable normal distribution. Normal distribution. So it means, right? It means that the probability of these guys being together, the returns of these guys being together in a searching cube, right, is given, the density is given by an n-dimensional function, right? And we have this n-dimensional integral that we need to integrate to get, to get the probability of that, okay? So this is going to be basically, right, the basic, our basic setup. Now, the beautiful property of this multivariable normal distribution, which I'm going to talk a little bit more in, in class and subsequent video, videos, right, that basically the, there are two, only two variables that define it. It's a covariance of two guys, right, and then the expected value of the guys. That's all there is to it. Right? So this goes, both of them goes from I1 to N. Now, if I have a portfolio of assets, right, and I have a sum like this, what I want to do, I want to find the expected value and I want to find the volatility, okay? We said in class, okay, that volatility equals risk in the modern finance, right? I mean, it's really not that exact, but I mean it's 90% there, right? So this is going to be easy peasy. This is just this, right? So it's a, a function in Excel that you guys are using is a sum product function. So when you do it in Excel, it's basically some product. Now, what about what about the volatility? Then it where that's where it gets very interesting because volatility, right, is actually equivalent to risk. So the formula that we did in class, and which I won't derive now because we derived it in class, but what we did, but what we said in class, that if I have a sigma of the portfolio, right, I can say that this is equals to the square root of i goes from 1 to n, okay, wi square, cii, right? So these are the diagonal of the, of the covariance matrix, right? So this covariance matrix is basically just cij. So it's just a covariance of the matrix plus, okay, the guys which are actually, you know, which are actually are, are not on the diagonal. And these guys are, of course, the mixed products. And we need to put two here so that we will all be happy and self contained Okay? So now, this term is, your, is basically the variance of each one. And this basically is a covariance. Okay? Now, what we want to do now, we want to develop this concept, right, which is similar to the concept of key rate durations for fixed income. Why do we want to develop it, right? Because remember what we had in fixed income. So we had the key rate durations, so it was 1 over P, delta P to delta YI, right? And what it gave us, it gave us a sensitivity, right? It gave us a sensitivity of each, uh, of each, uh, of each uh, yield, right? of the price to this yield, but it's a relative sensitivity, right? So not, okay, if the price is 100, right, and the yield moves by 2%, then the yield will move by 102, no. Rather, the yield moves, let's say, by 2%, and then you take the 100 times 2, and you get the 102, okay? So here, right, this was the key rate duration I. So what we want to do, Z here, we want to develop the same concept, okay? So we are just going to use the definition. All we do here, we're using the definition. So when we are looking at key rate durations or key rate duration with risk, right, our sensitivities will be those guys. 
okay? They will be the weights of the each asset inside the portfolio, which will tell us the following, right? If my asset moves by 1%, by how much, on relative terms, my portfolio, my sigma p will move, right? So, well, it's easy peasy, right? Because this is going to be basically just 1 over sigma p, delta sigma p, to delta wi. Right? Now, we all know how to derive, I hope we all know how to derive it, you know, I don't know, maybe you guys forgot, but let me remind you, because you already had the test, but let me remind you, right? So this is going to be basically down, so this is going to be, so this is sigma p, so because I have another sigma p here, it will be two times sigma p square, right? On the top, on the top here, right, we're going to get two times wi cii, okay, plus, okay, i is not j, two times wi wj, without the wj, cij, okay? So that's the formula that we are having here, okay? Now, the good thing, the good news is that 2 is going away. Okay? So now what you are getting, you are getting the following formula. You are getting that z equals to, right, wi cii, wi cii, plus, right, we are going to get here as well, and now uh, as well, wj, wj, cij, and we all divide it by sigma p square. So this we don't need. Okay. So this is your formula for Kirai duration. Now, how do you need to interpret this formula? Look, on, look back here, right? If you are going to, uh, if you are going to take this guy, right, and you are going to divide it, right, to divide it by W, you will get exactly what you are having here, but without the two, right? So, if you take this guy, and you will write it like this, WI, WI square CII, plus, right, here, we are going to get WI, WJ, CIJ, but now we are going to write it twice. You can see immediately, right, that if you take double one wi out of the bracket, so you are going to write this as wi, wi, plus uh, wi cii plus plus uh, wj the sum wj cij, right? Whatever is going to be here inside this, inside this square. It's exactly this. Okay? So what you are getting here, right, that if you take your original expression and you kind of decompose, decompose the numerator, right, into those wi buckets, okay, you are going to get the exactly the same formula that you have here. Now, as I told you in class, right, this is basically the interpretation of risk decomposition, right? So we are going to talk about this a little bit more in the subsequent videos. But, you know, I need you to remember this formula. I need to remember your derivation. And in class, I will give you examples of how to use this formula to analyze what happens with risk, right, when, when weights of your portfolio are moving, okay? So it's great talking to you, great teaching you, and, you know, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Little bit more mathematical than usual, but, you know, it's fine. I think you guys will overcome it. You're smart.